Okay, so this is a short uh, screencast on uh, Chapter 20, the Value Added Tax. So what do we know about VAT? Well, first thing is that we need to classify supplies. We need to establish whether or not a particular supply is zero rated or standard rated or perhaps reduced rated. Now we know the limits, uh, we know the rates zero rated, we're effectively charging that, but we're charging at zero percent. Reduced rated might be something like light and heat or gas, and that would be at 5%. Um, obviously, exempt supply is completely outside the scope of that, or standard rated at 20%. That might be something like accountancy services. Now, one thing that's unusual with the uh, legislation is that there's no list of um, standard rated supplies. So, in other words, if you were trying to figure out whether or not an item was standard rated at 20%, you couldn't actually go to the uh, legislation and find that particular supply to confirm that it was uh, 20%. So really what you'd have to do is you'd have to go through what we call a process of elimination. In other words, you'd have to run through the zero rated, reduced rated and exempt list and see if the item was in there. And if it wasn't, then it would be standard rated. Now, I don't expect you'd have to do that within the exam, but just be aware of the fact that there's no list of standard rated supplies. Okay. Now, in terms of um, uh, dealing with uh, VAT in, in practicality, in other words, if you're a VAT registered trader, um, how does VAT uh, apply to you? Well, the first thing is you will have registered perhaps uh, on a compulsory basis. In other words, your um, taxable supplies are in excess of £77,000 for the last 12 months, and you've been required to register, in other words, required to charge that on your supplies. You could have also registered voluntarily, um, perhaps to be able to reclaim input VAT on your supplies, in other words, to um, increase your profits, because if you're not including input VAT in your profit and loss account, um, then obviously your expenses are, are, are going to be lower, your profit will be higher. But if you are registered, if you have gone over the limit, then you must charge the relevant rate of VAT, let's say it's 20%, on all of your supplies to customers. I mean, bear in mind that makes you 20% uh, more expensive than the next trader. So that is a consideration. Um, may well be that you uh, need to uh, uh, increase your prices to allow for the fact that 20% of what you receive is in effect going to have to be paid over less any input tax that you have. And the normal way that VAT works is that for each quarter, let's say three months, you will account for um, output VAT or sales VAT, i.e. the VAT that you add to your sales and receive in from your customers, you will account for that less any input VAT. So what is input VAT? Well, input VAT is really anything that you pay out that has VAT included. So for your regular trader, that might be something like a, a mobile phone bill, um, perhaps a, a, a business landline, a business phone, perhaps petrol motor expenses, all of these items will have VAT included within them. And what you're required to do is collect that uh, amount of that, the amount of input that, deduct it from your um, output that or your sales that, and really pay over that liability in accordance with uh, VAT regu regulations. Broadly speaking, we pay 30 days um, after the quarter end. So let's say the quarter was January, February, March. Normally, you would pay by the 30th of April. If you're filing online and paying online, then you have an extra seven days. So that would be the, uh, the 7th of May. Okay. So essentially, you're a, a sort of an unpaid collector for HMRC. You're required to collect that um, and really pay it over to HMRC in line with the, uh, uh, the dates and deadlines. Okay. So moving on from that, in terms of possible scenarios. It could be that this particular trader is what we call a zero rated trader. I think I mentioned one in class to you, um, the supply of coach services. So in other words, if you're um, providing a coach service perhaps to a football club or a, any sort of club really, um, you would be um, zero rated on that supply. So in other words, you would not be charging a, your uh, customers VAT, and did you would be, but at zero percent. And if you're a zero-rated trader, then you can reclaim all of the VAT that you can, you can incur. Um, so if you think about it, what would happen every three months is that uh, 
you wouldn't be making a payment of that. You would actually be receiving a rebate from HMRC um, into your bank account. And that can be quite handy for companies, as you'd expect. You'd be um, having a, a rebate of that rather than paying it over. Now, obviously, an exempt trader um, wouldn't charge that at all. And indeed, it can't recover um, any VAT at all in any way, shape or form. A standard rate trader, as you'd expect, um, applies 20% and can recover all of their that. So you, as you can see, the top one there, the zero rate trader and the standard rate trader, they're in a, they're in a position where all of their input that um, is recoverable. Now that's quite important. Uh, this area is quite important when we come on to looking at um, traders who perhaps make a series of different types of supplies. Because if we have a trader perhaps who's making uh, standard rated and, uh, and exempt supplies, then uh, in relation to their input VAT, they can reclaim obviously everything on their standard rated VAT. But on their exempt supplies, they can reclaim nothing. So that's be, that would be what we would call a, a partially exempt trader. Okay, a partially exempt trader in a position where they can't recover everything that they're incurring in terms of um, input VAT. So do remember that uh, scenario when we move forward. So just a, a, a quick re recap. We have no... Uh, standard list or definition of uh, what a standard rated supply is, we have to go through that process of elimination by looking at the legislation. Um, I don't think that that would happen within your exam. You'll be given the details of whether or not the supplies are standard rated or zero rated uh, or exempt. But there certainly is no list. We'd have to go through that process of elimination that we talked about. And then we touched on sort of VAT registration. I mean, it may well be that the trader is required to uh, register for VAT on a compulsory basis. So their taxable supplies in the last 12 months are in excess of £77,000. Or it may be that they've done it voluntarily so that they could recoup or recover um, their input VAT. Or maybe they did that just for sort of kudos or for their image of their business. They like the idea of having a VAT registration number on their letterheads or on their invoices because Perhaps it gives the impression, or they think it gives the impression, that uh, they're a larger business uh, uh, than they are because uh, uh, customers, or indeed anyone else, may think that their supplies, uh, or indeed their sales, are in excess of uh, £77,000. So there could be a number of reasons why you would do it voluntarily. Obviously, there's a lot of admin attached to, um, uh, to being VAT registered, VAT returns, etc., and penalties if you file or pay late. So um, I guess it's a balance between the two. Okay, but I guess the key thing for some people will be the recoverability of input VAT uh, and therefore an uplift in profit because of the fact that uh, their profit and loss account doesn't include VAT. It won't include VAT because they will have uh, reclaimed it from uh, HMRC. Okay, so moving on to the next section, something that we've just mentioned actually, partial exemption. So really what, what is that? Um, well, really, that's a trader who is making some form of uh, taxable supplies, but zero rate or more likely a standard rate, but also making um, other supplies which are exempt. So in that position, really, um, this trader would have input VAT in a variety of different forms. So on the left-hand side of the screen here, you'll see that uh, we have... Um, taxable supplies or input VAT relating to taxable supplies and as you would expect that is um, wholly recoverable um, that can be reclaimed in full in effect okay there's no problem with uh, recovering that and in the middle you've got uh, that area of um, input VAT relating to exempt supplies in other words input VAT that um, has been incurred that specifically relates to something that for VAT purposes has been classified as exempt. So as you would imagine if it's an exempt supply then that input VAT isn't recoverable but just bear in mind the de minimis levels, uh, levels that we uh, touched on yesterday and uh, we're going to have a look through a question on that now. Okay. Last side is, is just with regard to sort of overheads and uh, Really, we're talking about sort of non-attributable VAT. And what we mean by overheads is really costs that are incurred that we're, we're not able to sort of split them um, between standard-rated supplies and exempt supplies. We just can't um, split them between the two. I mean, maybe a good example would be something like um, 
like a building or, or materials or or maybe painting and decorating costs uh, um, maintenance costs associated with the building and in that building we have um, uh, taxable supplies being made and uh, exempt supplies being made for the same trader so although they can split between the two direct uh, input tax there is a third level of input tax that uh, that they can't split between the two and that's where the uh, de minimis limits come in and also the fraction that you'll see there of taxable supplies over total supplies so i'll run through the detail of that in a moment so de minimis levels uh, levels are uh, are applicable really for the second two groups there okay and we'll touch on that how we actually calculate that in a moment so really in terms of um, the key question within uh, partial exemption is really how do we split it now on the previous slide you saw a fraction there so we get a feel for the fact that we have to take you know some sort of proportion some sort of proportion of these uh, uh, non-attributable non-attributable inputs as it were or non uh, input back a proportion of it um, and really reclaim that proportion subject to the de minimis tests. So, in terms of um, a, a summary, really what we've got, as you saw on the first slide there, is that um, you know VAT, which is attributable to taxable supplies, is definitely going to be okay. Um, if it's exempt supplies, it's definitely not going to be okay, and it's not going to be recoverable. Um, and the third element is is really where we have to apportion it. So, really, how do we apportion it? As you saw from the first slide, what we're looking to do is really to find out or to perhaps compare um, the total level of taxable supplies um, in comparison to the total supplies um, uh, that the business makes. So when we say taxable supplies, we're talking about all taxable supplies, so you know zero rated and indeed standard rated. And when we talk about total supplies, it's literally everything, everything including exempt supplies. So as you can see from that, what we'd be looking to do is really come up with a percentage. So a couple of points on the on the percentage. First thing is to round it up to the nearest whole percentage, and the th and the second thing is from each of these figures, in other words, from uh, total taxable supplies and also total supplies, exclude that and exclude supplies of um, capital items. What I would expect them to do within the exam is is actually to um, uh, to include these items, in other words, to include that and to include supplies of capital items within your um, uh, within your question, and see whether or not you're aware of the fact that uh, you need to exclude them. Okay, I'm just going to pause the uh, uh, screencast there just to allow you to get a feel for that, and I'll resume in one moment. Okay, so we're looking at a position where the trader is what we call partially exempt. They're making part, uh, partly uh, standard rated supplies and partly um, exempt supplies. And what we said was that we need to look at the relationship between taxable supplies and total supplies and just watch out for those two tricks uh, that they could play. In other words, they would include that in the figures, which you have to exclude before you come up with your percentage. Or indeed, they could include capital items. And what do we mean by capital items? Basically, sales of things like perhaps a, a, a computer. Um, plus that, you'd have to exclude that before you come up with, with your percentage as well. Bear in mind, we've got to uh, uh, round up that percentage to the nearest whole percentage. Now, we touched uh, in the first slide on, on these uh, de minimis limits. And really, what we're saying there is that, OK, you would go through that process of having to split between, um, uh, in effect, taxable and non-taxable, taxable and exempt, apply the percentage to your tables and uh, split up that back. But we have um, these sort of get-out clauses, i.e. just the idea that um, if we can satisfy these conditions, then in fact we can claim everything. Yeah? So we've done all that work of splitting up the VAT, but if we can satisfy these conditions, we can reclaim literally all input VAT that we've incurred, regardless of whether or not it's uh, uh, unattributable or exempt or whatever we call it, we can claim it all. Uh, so the two limits are really 625. Do bear in mind that's per month um, on average. So that would be in a given quarter three times uh, 625. Or that 50% of all uh, input VAT for the period okay, uh, is under the limit. 
So do bear in mind we've got to satisfy um, both of those tests, both of those tests in order to be able to reclaim everything. Okay. So let's move on now to um, a sort of an example of this uh, coming straight from the study text. Um, here you've got someone who's making uh, several different types of supply. And the key thing here really is the non-attributable uh, VAT. So in other words, it's input VAT that they can't classify as one or the other. So we've got to decide how we deal with it. So really here's where the, um, the fraction comes into play. We've got to use that fraction or find the values for it and, and really apply whatever we get, whatever percentage we get, round it up to the nearest whole number, apply that to that non-attributable input VAT and then once we've done that, then we've got to look at the de minimis test because hopefully we could be in a position where indeed all of that for, uh, 5,400 could be reclaimable rather than the, just the element relating to taxable supplies, which is 2250. So I guess when you see this sort of question in the exam, what you've got to be thinking of is columns. Yeah? In other words, a total column for all of the VAT, uh, an exempt column. And a column that's claimable, really, a, co a column for um, items that you, you can reclaim. So that's what you've got to think about is really a set of columns. So looking at the answer now, what you'll see here is indeed a set of columns. Um, the easy bits really are the top bits where you see um, the items that are indeed just given in the question. They're just split between the two columns. So taxable supplies go into uh, the taxable element, exempt into the exempt element. It's only when we get down to the non-attributable element that we've got to allow for this fraction. Yeah? Bear in mind the two tricks that I've talked about. In other words, the, for the figures that you put into this fraction, take out any VAT and also take out any element that relates to a capital supply. So when you put this fraction together, um, in this case we're rounding up to 83%, then you just literally apply that to the 1,800 pounds that was classified as non-attributable. Yeah, so that will be perhaps relating to maybe overheads in a building, and we couldn't classify it between the two, so we had to find a percentage um, and, and split it up. So what you'll see is that we're, uh, and what we're aiming for really is a set of totals really for exempt supplies and indeed for taxable supplies. And really that figure of 1656 is, is really the key figure for the de minimis tests. In other words, we've got to just see if that figure sort of satisfies the conditions. Yeah. So the test was in two parts. If you remember, that figure is 625 per month. Remember, it's per month, not per quarter. So um, if we're talking about a quarter, we normally would be within questions. We're going to triple that, um, or we're just simply going to divide the monthly uh, VAT that we have, the exempt element, by three. Okay. So really, part one of the test is satisfied. Part two is in fact also satisfied because we're looking at the um, exempt input that um, really over the total amount of input that, okay, which is 5,400. So that's under 50%. So it looks as if both parts of the tests are satisfied. And that means that we can reclaim everything, literally everything. So sort of, you know, we've gone through a fair amount of work uh, to be able to split them and then we can reclaim everything. So a little bit odd. Okay. So Certainly those tests are a, a fair amount of work. So there is, if you will, for a trader, um, a more simplified test. And these are outlined here, test one and test two. And really with these ones, um, we just need to uh, satisfy one. Yeah? So a little bit more straightforward. Same sort of, uh, sort of values in there for the 625 per month and uh, the 50%. But we could just sort of do this off the cuff without having to do our... Um, our, our, our columns, although they're very, very similar, they're not too, uh, um, uh, they're not too simplified, uh, as it were. We still need to know the numbers. Okay. So th with this one, Jessica, um, we have a total input tax for the period of uh, 1600. So what we're looking at is really total supplies here. So we're asked to see whether or not test one for the quarter is satisfied, and to state the input tax recoverable. So let's have a quick look at the answer. Um, really, same sort of situation. We've got um, two parts to the test, um, and it looks as if, based on those um, values, that in fact um, each of the tests, or each part of the test, is satisfied. So 
in effect in Jessica's case uh, under the simplified test, test one, um, she can also claim all of the VAT back. So we had no detailed numbers there in the question, we just had a, a sort of an absolute or total figure. So a little bit straightforward, but the, the numbers are still very, very similar. Okay. So we could either be using the standard test or the simplified test. Um, we'd have to apply that to each period, normally be a quarter, I would suspect, uh, within the questions that you'll see. But that's not really not the end of it, because what we've got to do is we've got to look at, let's say, four quarters for the year and really look at the big picture in terms of the annual situation. So it may well be that uh, we've had uh, uh, the tests applying in one or other quarters, or maybe even in all the quarters, but there may be a requirement for an annual adjustment. In other words, either, um, uh, or quite possibly, um, a, a repayment back to HMRC because of the fact that the figures don't quite tie in on an annual basis. So really what we're doing then is, after having gone through these series of tests for let's say four quarters we're looking at the business on a total basis for the whole year and saying well you know what do the figures show us yeah so just have a look at if you will uh, the interactive question on page 427 and that will take you through um, the annual adjustment okay so in terms of uh, just a quick recap here really on partial exemption essentially what we're looking to do is to establish how much uh, non-attributable or even uh, uh, exempt um, uh, input uh, tax or exempt uh, uh, input VAT can be reclaimed. We've got a choice between the standard test, which is a little bit more long-winded uh, than the simplified tests. And really what we're trying to do is compare the figures that we have, certainly in the standard test, to de minimis limits and just establish whether or not we can reclaim all of the other VAT that wasn't related to taxable supplies. Do remember that at the end of the year that you will have to compare uh, your figures regardless of whether or not you've used uh, the, the, the standard test, uh, the long-winded version, or indeed the simplified test. You'll have to compare your figures to the annual situation. Let's say you've done four quarters, and let's say three of them have uh, satisfied the test. It may well be that one didn't, um, and that was a large one. And perhaps you could end up in a position where you have to repay um, VAT or input to VAT that you've claimed back to HMRC. Okay. So next um, item on the agenda here is property transactions. So really for property, what we're talking about is really you know the sale or lease of a land or, or indeed buildings or perhaps the supply of services relating to land and building, perhaps the conversion of a building in some way. In some way. So the key question is really, how do we tax these? You know, are they zero rated or are they standard rated? You know, as we uh, sell a piece of land, do we apply standard rated uh, VAT to it or, or, or do we zero rate it? Um, no, not so much computations here, just a fair amount of narrative within the text for you. Okay. So the general rule is really that the supply is exempt. It's a the supply of land indeed is exempt. Um, but bear in mind that the owner can opt to tax. In other words, that the owner can say, well, yes, the, the, the supply is exempt, but I've decided that on this sale of this piece of land to this particular trade or this particular person, um, I'm going to opt to treat the supply um, as taxable and apply 20% to the sales value. Um, you have to wonder to yourself, well, why would a trader do that? Well, I think there's several possible reasons, and one of which would be so that you know, that VAT relating to perhaps sales of land will be um, reclaimable, I mean input VAT. So really the only sort of real reason why someone would opt to tax is so that they can reclaim something. Um, okay. So in terms of residential buildings, there's quite a few different possibilities. You'll see the list within your, within your study text. And uh, it may well be that you feel that you have to sort of rote learn them. I think question practice is key for this sort of area because there's so many different types. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see here with residential buildings, um, you know, quite a few different areas. So we're looking at perhaps um, you know the construction of a new residential building would be zero rated. Perhaps work on an existing re residential building down the bottom would be 
standard rated. So a certain element of rote learning is going to be required here. Okay. Um, in terms of commercial buildings, two main areas really uh, standard rated versus um, exempt. But sort of uh, draw your attention to the fact that um, if the building is new, which in fact is just less than three years old on the left hand side there, second one down, if it's new, then any supply in relation to that building would be standard rated. If it's old and that's three years plus, it would be exempt. Okay. So why would you opt to tax? I touched on that earlier on. And, and really the key reason, as I've said, is that um, the individual concerned would like to be able to reclaim that relating to this particular supply or this particular uh, building. And bear in mind that we're talking about opting to tax on the individual building rather than all the buildings that the, uh, uh, the particular person owns. So really that would be the key reason to be able to reclaim. Okay. So in terms of the key points here, um, what you've got to bear in mind is that um, if we're opting to tax in relation to a particular building, then indeed all supplies relating to that building will be standard rated in the future. The owner can certainly change their mind in relation to this option. You know, they would have to inform the uh, revenue that they're opting to tax the particular building. And certainly change their mind within six months, but can only do that if no supplies have been made after the option to tax has been uh, put into place. So if, if they have made supplies within that six-month period, then they can't change their mind. Um, the option can, uh, can also be revoked, in other words, taken back uh, or negated. Uh, as it were, um, automatically um, after six years if the person who opted to tax has no interest in the business. And, and in addition, with the consent of HMRC after 20 years. So do take a look at interactive question on page 20, uh, 432 in relation to this area of opting to tax. Okay. Capital goods scheme, very, very similar here to um, this issue of partial exemption, um, in a way, which we spoke of. Um, although it doesn't necessarily have to relate to a partial exempt, uh, partial exempt trader. And really what we're talking about here is just this idea of businesses you know, purchasing high value items. In other words, uh, items, let's say uh, a piece of computer equipment with uh, a net value of 100,000 and VAT on top at 20%. So businesses will be um, purchasing these items and really hoping to reclaim as much as possible. But the reclaim, or at least the initial reclaim, is based on their usage of the business. In other words, are they using it for taxable supplies, or perhaps are they using it for exempt supplies? You could have a 50-50 split, you could have a 60-40 a split. And what the legislation requires us to do, or re requires the trader to do, is only to reclaim, let's say if it was £120,000 gross on a piece of equipment, only reclaim the element that relates to uh, taxable usage, as it were. You know, it could be 50% of that, so the, the initial reclaim and the initial VAT return would only be £10,000. Okay. So really, what we're saying here is that high-value items like uh, computer equipment, uh, slightly higher limit for uh, land and buildings, the revenue are looking at the recoverability, the initial recoverability, and also the recoverability over time. Uh, for things like computer equipment, it would be over five years. For land and buildings, um, it would be over 10 years. So what the revenue are trying to do is just monitor the use of the item, monitor it over a period of time, so that if the initial reclaim is, let's say, 50%, and the usage of that piece of computer equipment falls, maybe, for taxable purposes or taxable supply purposes, to 40%, then what the revenue would be saying is, well, you know, your initial reclaim was 50%. We need to claw some of that input back, that input back, back from you because your usage has fallen. Okay, um, and it may well be that you get a question where usage changes year to year. So, if, as mentioned, it was computer equipment, uh, the time lag for that is five years. In other words, the uh, HMRC will be monitoring or want to monitor usage for five years. So it could be that the usage changes in each of the years. So it may well be in, in each of those years you have a reclaim required um, uh, by HMRC from the trader. Okay. So in terms of uh, the key detail here, really the ones that you should watch out for are 
um, building and land costing 250, uh, 250k or more, or indeed single computer items, excluding software, each costing uh, 50,000 pounds or more. And those are net values. Okay. So in terms of the recovery, as you'd expect, and as I just mentioned, if, if the business is wholly taxable, then you know if we're charging uh, or if we're being charged uh, about at 20% on top of let's say land and buildings or uh, computer items in excess of 50, then 100% would be uh, recoverable by a wholly taxable business. But if the business is partially exempt, and this is what I expect they'll do in the exam uh, because it makes it more uh, interesting uh, in, in terms of the work that you have to do, really what we'd be looking to do is to recover in line with the proportion of um, uh, taxable supplies or taxable usage versus non-taxable supplies or non-taxable usage. Okay. Where the business is wholly exempt, as you see down the bottom, then um, no input tax recovery um, is available at all. Okay. So we said about uh, um, uh, adjusting for the change in use. I mean, how do we do that? Well, really, we've got to look at each interval. In other words, each year. You know, that would be the normal interval. And what we what we've got to do is take the total input that, let's say, for computer equipment, we'd be looking at an interval or a period of five years for land and buildings it would be ten and we've got to look at the taxable usage in that year versus the original taxable usage in other words the original claim when the item was actually purchased so if the taxable usage um, has in fact increased um, then indeed the, the trader can reclaim the VAT if it has decreased then they have to pay back the difference and I suspect what they would do in the exam is maybe give you uh, one of each uh, over a period of time, let's say if it was computer equipment, it could be one of each over that uh, uh, period of uh, five years. So you would have to work out what the difference is in terms of what should have been claimed uh, and what is uh, to be claimed. Okay. So in terms of a question here, we've got a, a PLC company called Diverse um, incurring a hundred thousand pounds of uh, uh, input that on um, a building, on the purchase of a building. Now what you'll see within here in terms of the usage is that four of the floors are in connection with an exempt supply, so six of the floors are in, con uh, in connection with a, a wholly taxable supplies, uh, supply. So you see we've got a 60-40 split there. Now five years after acquisition, remember that uh, the period for land and buildings is 10 years, so five years after acquisition, we've got a situation where it switches back to um, retail trade, so wholly taxable. So what we've got to do is really explain how the input tax would be recovered. So it looks to me as if this is actually quite a good position for the company to be in. What you've got is uh, perhaps further reclaims, in other words, further reclaims after the five-year point because of the fact that the initial reclaim was too low. I would suspect that uh, um, your examiner may do a little bit of both, as I've said. In other words, perhaps uh, one year may be um, a reclaim from HMRC, one year may be the other way around. So really, what have you got to do? Well, you've got to apply that fraction that we looked at to this question and say, well, you know, the initial recovery was 60%. We got that okay, that was the 60-40. But in terms of the usage, i.e. The, 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 the comparison, we had to use really the initial um, recovery, um, uh, which was 60%, and then just look at the difference between that and current recovery, or what current recovery should be. In fact, it had gone up. So really from the, um, uh, from the sixth year, in effect, we could be in a position with diverse people, PLC would be in a position, where they can reclaim more VAT on each of the subsequent years because of the fact that their usage has gone up. Okay, so just compare that position with where a situation where maybe their usage has gone down and they're having to pay it over. Okay, so recap then. In terms of capital goods, we're looking at mainly land and buildings where the value is in excess of 250, 250k, or perhaps computer equipment in excess of 50k. Um, bear in mind that the years or the period uh, over which HMRC monitor the situation for land and buildings is 10 years and for computer equipment it's 5 years. And really what we're trying to do over that period is to look at the usage in, com uh, in comparison to the original reclaim. In other words, what was the original claim?
it's highly unlikely to be 100%. It's going to be less than that, I'm sure. So you're looking at the difference, and each year we're either going to have some sort of reclaim by HMOC or some sort of um, uh, rebate yeah, going in the other direction. Okay. So next item on the agenda is um, overseas aspects for um, for companies and uh, uh, individuals and, uh, and that. It's fairly straightforward. There are no calculations within this particular section. I think it's more a question of just being familiar with the terminology. So really what we've got to be aware of is, in terms of overseas, is that VAT applies within the EU only. And for sale, read dispatch, for purchase, read acquisition. And then obviously we've got exports and imports um, uh, outside the um, uh, EU. Okay. So in terms of um, dispatches, you know, what do we do? Well, if we're making a dispatch of any kind uh, within the EU, it's effectively zero rated as long as the customer is registered for that. In other words, the customer is a business customer registered for that. Now, that customer where you're making that dispatch has to supply their VAT number. They have to do that in order for you uh, to zero rate the supply. Otherwise, you've got to standard rate it. Okay? And what you'll need to do as a trader making dispatches to other um, um, EU members is certainly hold evidence of the supply. In other words, proof of dispatch, perhaps a, um, some sort of supply document or dispatch note, okay, so that you can prove it. So proper records are absolutely essential. Um, in terms of an acquisition, um, what we've got here, if you imagine the reverse of what we were talking about, so let's say we're receiving the goods into maybe the UK, um, then what we've got to do is, is in effect, uh, assume that uh, it is um, a VAT registered supply coming in this direction. So we will have been uh, zero rated on the supply coming in. And unusually what we've got to do, um, and this is just part of the uh, HMOC's VAT legislation, the supplier uh, will zero rate the supply, but the person being supplied, so the person receiving the goods, will, it, will in, uh, in effect charge himself VAT. In other words, will charge himself VAT, i.e. include input VAT, um, on the supply coming in. So in effect, we'll have to sort of uh, pay out that VAT um, uh, to HM um, uh, Customs and Excise, um, but also to reclaim it. So in effect, what we're saying is that the supply is coming into the UK in order to be able to take that supply. Um, the individual concerned um, has to add VAT on and pay that over in duty to HMRC uh, VAT office but then we'll include that element of VAT as an input as well. So in effect, um, it's neutral because there will be output VAT on the return, on the VAT return, and also input VAT. So the difference is, is zero. A yeah? little bit unusual, but just think of the idea of a zero rate supply coming in, um, the VAT registered trader having to account for VAT on that zero rate uh, supply, um, and then reclaiming the same amount, so uh, in effect a neutral effect. Okay, so um, um, imports are really treated in the same way as um, a normal supply if the um, trader is registered. And what we mean by that, that uh, is that if that it's standard rated, uh, it, standard rate would apply. If it's uh, zero rated, then a zero rate would apply. So if it was standard rated, in other words, if the, um, reg uh, if the registered trader had to um, account for um, standard rated VAT on the item coming in, then the individual would simply reclaim that VAT um, uh, within the VAT return. In effect, what we're saying is that this is a duty that will be charged at the port in order for the trader to be able to get their hands on that import, that supply, in order to be able to take that supply from the Port, VAT will have to be paid, but because VAT is being paid, um, in effect, VAT can also be reclaimed. So again, the effect will be um, neutral. Okay. In terms of an export, um, zero rated. So if we're exporting um, outside the EU, we would simply zero rate the supply. But we must keep um, documentation or evidence of the fact that that item, that particular good, let's say, has been exported, some sort of uh, um, official documentation so that if the HMRC were to challenge that, if they were to say perhaps that the item, uh, they don't believe that the item has been um, exported outside of the EU, um, then we would need to provide them with evidence.
Okay. So really that's a, a sort of a conclusion of um, VAT. I hope you found that helpful. Um, and uh, please do make sure you concentrate on doing questions rather than um, reading.